Now, what is what is the scheme? So, what is the scheme now? This adaptive kind of a thresholding scheme. This scheme. Mm, the scheme. First thing. What it does is now I'm going to talk about something you know that is borrowed from a paper by Chow and uh, Chow Kaniko. Okay, now this is a thresholding scheme that comes from this paper of Chow Chow Kaniko. But uh, you know, but this but this thresholding scheme is fairly general. This adaptive kind of a thresholding strategy, very general, and you could apply it even for Otsu and so on. Okay, but I'm just just for just for your as a reference. Now now in this paper, right? What they suggest is. They say that divide the image into seven cross seven regions. So what this means is that what this means is that I mean so you, so you have the whole image right and now you divide it into seven cross one two three four five six one two three four five one two three four five six and just one more box. And there you have like your seven cross seven, seven regions. No, each is a region. Please remember, this is not a pixel. Okay, this is a region. Okay, each is a region. So you've got like seven cross seven. Um, there's there isn't anything very sacred about seven cross seven. That's what they talk about in their paper. You can change it. You can make it five cross five. You can make it nine cross nine. It's up to you. But in the paper, right? What they talk about is seven cross seven. Now, find and find the histogram. For each region, find the histogram for each region. Okay. Then, then employ. Okay, in your case, in our case, we are talking about Otsu. So employ Otsu. Otsu sort of a thresholding method. You could you could replace it with anything, okay? But since we have since I have taught you Otsu, we'll talk about Otsu. So employ Otsu uh, at thresholding for each region, okay? Because you have the histogram. Now now you know how to actually search for a T. So for each region, you will search for a for a you know, T star. Hmm. Now, okay, call it whatever T I J star. Okay, let's call this as T I J star. Okay, what do we mean by T I J star? So, so that is like in that region. Okay, whatever you got like seven cross seven, right? So, whatever so you've got like seven cross seven. Now, uh, any region is like the I J th region. Okay, a, a threshold for that, the optimal uh, value of a threshold for that, we'll indicate it as T I J star. Okay, now after having found T i j star, we do what is called three conduct. Do do a bimodality test. Okay, what this kind of means is that because of the fact that right, you've actually broken it down in down into individual regions. Okay, we right. So they advocate the idea that you should check for the fact whether 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 the underlying histogram can be. Can be reasonably believed to be uh, to be kind of right um, uh, bimodal in the sense that whether a distribution of the intensities okay in each region whether it follows a bimodal law or not because after all right we are trying to okay which is what which is what we are trying to do in this case when you are doing to when you are know, trying to binarize so saying that there should be actually two classes now it could so happen that uh, that actually you know there is only one class under that region simply because you have divided the whole image okay, in which case. In which case, it would it would not be it would be incorrect to try to choose some CT star or try to fit some CT star there. Okay, now what this what this bimodality test? What, what is it now? Okay, now the way it works, and right, I'm going to write down the write down the steps for this. Okay, bimodality test. Now the steps are as follows. So what does the bimodality test involve? So first thing is it says that the means. So after you have computed, right? So after you have found out a Tij star for a for a region, you find out the means, and uh, you would know the means, right? Because this is what you've calculated. They gave mu one of t and mu two of t. Now in this case, you will have mu one of uh, Tij uh, star and mu two of Tij star. Okay. Now the means must 
uh, differ by differ by by more than four gray levels by more than four gray levels now there is again nothing sacred about this uh, four like i said in one of the earlier in, the, the, in my very first class on image enhancement i said that there will be certain hyperparameters that you might want to choose when you do image enhancement so this is some kind of a hyperparameter now you may want to choose six someone else might say that i want to use eight ten okay we don't know so what this means is that right so 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 uh, after you have divided it into kind of two classes you are saying that these means should be sufficiently well apart right otherwise otherwise uh, you know it's not um, so it would not be a good idea to have two means that are very close okay and to sort of uh, and to sort of look for a say t star okay you know in between them so which is why right bimodal bimodal in the sense that we expect something like that right to come and not uh, not kind of something something like this to come right so here the means are just way too close not just the mean there is also there are also other conditions the other thing is one more thing that it should satisfy is that the ratio of their standard deviation of the standard deviations must be small so the standard deviations deviations must be small so what does what does this mean Okay, which actually means that so you know they choose again some number. This again a uh, hyperparameter, less than sigma one by sigma two is less than two. Okay, so point five here. Now what this means is that uh, you don't want to want to you know end up end up in a situation where you know you have a you have a you have a distribution that looks uh, like this. I mean after you have put the classes right, you end up. end up with something like that right so you have a very small variance for this guy and then a fairly large variance for this guy so this ratio of the standard is so you don't want something very skewed right towards uh, to well, let's say one of the classes so you want to see this ratio of the standard deviations should be to be right within uh, within uh, kind of a kind of a reasonable value it happens to be like 0.522 and then third test for bimodality is that the peak to valley ratio the peak to valley ratio the peak to valley ratio should be greater than 1.25 again this 1.25 is uh, is something that you can change be greater than 1.25 this is what these authors advocate in their paper but again you could try with like 1.5 or something okay again up to you what this means is that the minimum of f of so where you know uh, where let's say so what this means is that okay you have this uh, you have your histogram so f of mu 1 minimum of f of mu 1 and f of mu 2 divided by uh divided by f of uh, mu at the lowest point okay let's call this mu low okay this should be greater than 1.25 that means what this means is that right <coughs> assume that uh, here is your valley okay that is your f of mu mu low so this is your valley and then and then you have your peak values okay which are happening here and here this is your f of mu 1 and mu 2 right this is the value of the histogram at mu 1 and mu 2 now pick the lower of the two okay don't 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 pick what is higher pick the lower of the two so that is minimum of f of mu 1 so this is mu 1 and this is mu 2 okay where mu 1 and mu 2 are the means of these two classes take the lower of the two divided by the by the by the valley right between the between the two that means wherever the histogram hits a low between these two means take that value and check whether it is greater than 1.25 if uh, the idea is if all three conditions are satisfied if all these conditions all okay mind you all these conditions are satisfied are satisfied then then uh then bimodality test is considered is passed okay then it means that it would it would, it would have passed the uh, it would have passed the bimodality test else not okay even if one of those conditions fail then it means that it has failed a bimodality test in which case we will assign for example if this guy failed the bimodality test we will assign tij to be equal to oh, tij to be equal to 0 
whereas wherever wherever you have a bimodality test it has passed the bimodality test we will have tij star there okay for example here it might have passed let's say here it's passed so in all these places we will assign a tij star maybe maybe it did not clear here and therefore tij will be zero there okay so this is of course a 7 cross 7 kind of these are 7 cross 7 regions as i said earlier now now going forward now let Okay, now I'm going to I'm going to explain to you what these things mean. Let W of R, there's some kind of a weight, okay, be equal to 0.2, okay, into phi minus R. Okay, now it might it might actually look uh, look a little crazy to you as to why somebody would want to do something like this. The idea is as follows. Now, let me just redraw that so that uh, no, I don't have to hop between uh, slides. Now, let me just draw that seven cross seven one, two. 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then you have 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, similarly 1, 2, 3, 4, then you got 5, 6 and then ah. Just extend this all the way down, extend this down, 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 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right. So, you got like 7 cross 7 regions. So, you divided the image into 7 cross 7 regions. Now, if you look at the center, right. So, the let us go down. So, there is your center, okay, of this entire image. So, so this center, right? So when when we say r equal to so here, so the r that you have here. So when you say r equal to zero, that means that means right, you're right there. If you and then your r could now vary. For example, <coughs> for example, if this is i comma j, and this is m comma n. Okay, so when m comma n is equal to i comma j, then r is zero. If m comma n happens to be here, then your r is one. So this is the Euclidean kind of a distance. Euclidean distance. So if you are here, then it'll be it'll be root of whatever, right? I mean, from here to here, it's one. From here to here, so it'll be it'll be root ten, right? So 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 each is each is considered to be a to be a unit distance. So think of this to, to this to this as uh, this is a unit distance, and therefore, oh sorry, it'll be one plus uh, one plus four. Okay, one plus four that is equal to root root five. Okay, so something here. Okay, something here will be like root five. Something here will be like root two. Okay, something here will have a distance root two. Then something here, right, will have a distance as you can clearly see, right. So this has root uh, 3 square plus 3 square that is root 18 this is some 4 point something right ok. So, this r is that so wherever you are so the ij could be anywhere ok. So, if your if your ij is here then of course your mn would then be would then be right in and around it. So, mn could be equal to ij mn could be this could be this could be this and so on and therefore the r would accordingly change. So, it is kind of kind of a weight. And if you notice carefully, right, in their paper they use phi because r can go can go up to four point something. It cannot cross phi, right? Wherever you are in this grid. Okay, one more thing. Okay, you can only go up to a maximum of phi. So what this means is that if you have taken this to be i comma j, then you are only kind of right allowed to go till an r such that the r it does not exceed phi. Okay, you should stop there. But then you could go in an asymmetric way. It is okay. For example, you could be here. See, if you are at the center, I mean, right, you could cover all the blocks. If you are somewhere, if you are not at the center, right, you may not cover all the blocks and you may not even be symmetric. For example, if you are here, then on this side you can go only a few, whereas on the other side you can go more. But how much you can, how far you can go is, is limited by the fact that R cannot exceed phi. Otherwise, otherwise this weight will start to be, uh, will start to, start to be a negative number. So, WR is always greater than or equal to 0, okay. And uh, okay, so basically that is your weight W of R. Now, given that right, this is W of R, and there'll be a little abuse of notation, right? As I write, so I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so, 
So when you when you take this, so when you are at i comma j and you simply consider this region, which is its own, that would be called zeroth order neighborhood. Neighborhood. When you go when you go outward, okay. So so all these guys that are surrounding this, this is all first order neighborhood. We will treat them as first order neighborhood. Then outside of that, right, all these guys that are sitting only, only these, okay, not, okay, it would not, it would not include, include, uh, include the guys inside. This we will call as our second order neighborhood and so on, okay. So it excludes. So the second order would ex exclude first order and the zeroth order. The first order would exclude the, the zeroth order. The zeroth order inclu includes only the only the, only the only the region i comma j. So this will be a second order neighborhood. Okay, this is how this is how we we will treat this say, neighborhood to be. Now compute a quantity. Right, what you wish what you wish to do is compute a quantity given quantity uh, called theta called uh, theta m comma n comma r dash such that this is equal to summation w r where this w r is of course you know the way it has been actually defined up into u of t of i j I will explain what u of t i j is and where the summation is carried over over ok well, uh, well i j belonging to r of m comma n comma I am going to say uh, r ok now what this means is that right if uh, if you are sitting at some m comma n Okay, so suppose suppose let's say suppose let's say that you're sitting at some m comma n here, then when you talk about r dash, so if r dash is zero, then it means that uh, then it means that you only kind of right, look at look at uh, look at you know t m comma n, so i comma j, so so then it'll mean that you're only going to be looking at t m comma n. If you put r dash equal to one, then then uh, then uh, right then you know that would mean that you're going to kind of look at look at uh, look at a first order neighborhood so if you are here if this is your m comma n then you are going to go to you know look at look at tij okay let us say that this is let me just indicate it by a different color this is m comma n then your ij will then be, will then involve this 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 so eight neighbors okay so when you say ij belonging to the neighborhood of m comma n so so it will mean these eight neighbors if I put r dash equal to 2 here, then it will mean that you are going to look at these 15 neighbors. Uh, well, in this case, because m comma n is here, so therefore, right, you can only go as far as this r right, does not exceed phi. Whereas, if you had taken this m comma n at the center, right, if this was m comma n, if this was at the center, then of course, it would have meant that r equal to 2 right, would have meant, meant this entire 15 uh, whatever 16 blocks right, out here. So this, 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 this and then all these okay all these 15 blocks around this guy but uh, you know but the second order neighborhood all those all those would be would be sitting here so the ij all those ijs okay belong to this neighborhood of m comma n okay so whether you choose i comma j or m comma n it doesn't really matter but but then if you choose let's say m comma n to be the region then then you'll then you look at what are all the i comma j's that should get involved right so 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 which uh, which ij regions should get involved Fine. Now, uh, what is this u of t i j now? So, this u of t i j is such that uh, where okay, I am going to write this u of t i j is equal to 1 if t i j greater than 0. Let me write it differently. So, u t i j is equal to 1 is tij greater than 0 that means if a threshold had been assigned to a region i comma j then utij will get a value 1 else 0 that is if tij equal to 0 because we know that wherever bimodality test failed we have we had assigned a value tij equal to 0 so for, for those for those things this utij will be 0 so u of tij will only carry a value 0 or 1 so, for example, W of R, if you put R equal to 0, you get W of R to be equal to 1, which is the maximum weight that you can get. 
and then as you go outward then this weight will start to start to fall so the idea being that the influence of a threshold coming uh, coming from a com a com a coming from a distance which is farther off should be less right so this w of r accounts for that now what you do is computing coming to a threshold right so 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 here if you're looking at some m comma n let us say that i'm here and i'm looking at s of m comma n that i want to assign okay s of m comma n and uh, and please note that this uh, a threshold is assigned for all regions even if a threshold has been already assigned to a region we don't simply take that we still interpolate okay so s of m comma n is in fact found for all m comma n so for all 49 blocks s of m s of m n that means this is threshold to be assigned to be assigned to region m n okay that's what it means to be assigned to region m n m comma n in that 7 cross 7 block m comma n so this is equal to summation now oh, this is again a slight abuse of notation k dash equal to 0 to r dash then there's a double sum here and then this is w of k into t i j now t i j okay this is not u of t i j this is the actual value of t i j which is a threshold okay it could be either 0 or whatever was assigned if there was an optimal value that was found because it passed uh, passed you know this one the this one bimodality test uh, so i comma j mm, belonging to what do you write r of m comma n comma k right and divided by summation k dash equals 0 to r dash okay and uh, theta of m comma n comma comma k dash okay this is how this is how it looks like now what does this mean right what this really means is this so if you are at some m comma n and you want to assign a threshold by interpolating from the neighbors so you're going to you're going to look at the neighbors of i comma j and then you're going to look first at the at itself which is k dash equal to 0 so the point is if k dash and of course you know and one more thing i should add uh, the interpolation terminates okay here i'm going to write that the interpolation terminates okay this is an interpolation right interpolation terminates terminates at that r dash r dash for which summation k dash equal to 0 to r dash theta of m comma n comma k dash exceeds exceeds theta naught now theta naught in the paper is chosen as 1.25 now this again is uh, is a hyperparameter you can change it so what so, so the way right so the way i see it is that what they want to do is for example if you had a region that already had you know a threshold then w of uh, so when you put k dash equal to 0 so so, so the so the immediate the immediate neighbor the first neighbor is the zero order neighborhood for which w of k will be 1 because right so uh, it will involve the region itself and then if there was a threshold right then uh, then right you would get uh, get some value of tij now because of the fact that now for that right theta m n m n comma k prime right as you can see from the earlier equation if you go to the previous one so theta is m n comma k prime if your k prime is equal to 0 u of t i j would have been 1 because you have already assigned that threshold and w of uh, w of uh, r right for the for the region which is innermost when you take r dash equal to 0 is 1 and therefore right, this number is already 1 now if if they had said theta equal to 1.25 then uh, you know we would have stopped the interpolation right there that means we would have taken s m n to be equal to you know to, uh, to be equal to c t m n itself they don't want to do that they want you to actually go out and scout for some more values okay of t i j which is the reason why theta naught theta naught is not equal to one it's actually but it is actually greater than one okay so that they are forcing you to change a threshold even if you have one so even if for some block you already have a threshold Right? They are not stopping there. They want you to scout for more regions in order to actually interpolate. Okay, this is this is their idea. This is the author's idea. 
Now, given that, uh, given that, right, that that is the case, then if you again come back and see interpret this, so what this means is that you keep you keep going from k dash is equal to zero to r dash and keep keep accumulating these weighted values of tijs. Now, in some places where where let's say where let's say you have an unassigned kind of a threshold, so there you know tij will be will be zero. Okay, so it doesn't mean that you will get a value tij everywhere. So it can also be zero for those regions where you have not assigned assigned any kind of threshold. <coughs> this denominator, okay. Uh, so so it doesn't mean that you compute summation till you reach r dash equal to two or something or two or three. You will stop the moment this guy right exceeds one point two five. Now. Uh, one more thing right to note is that uh, this denominator also acts as a kind of a normalization constant right it's, it is not only to to enable you to kind of uh, terminate terminate the you know interpolation but it also helps it also acts as an acts as a normalization factor by which what we mean is if there are several blocks involved right see for example if some if for some let's say m comma n Okay, but if I'm sitting uh, with my m comma n there, okay, then it's very likely that uh, that I have access to several regions, like from where from where I can pick, okay, which then means that which then means that uh, there is a possibility, right, that this value will go up, right, because I'm trying to trying to uh, trying to pick pick uh, pick from pick from several regions. But then, right, if that happens, then uh, you don't want SMN to go and to to become unnecessarily big simply because it has access to more regions. So you kind of you kind of you kind of balance that off by using a normalization factor. So this denominator will also go up as you as you keep accessing accessing more regions, and therefore it will try to balance your SFM comma n. On the other hand, if you have a region like this, let us say right somewhere here. Okay, let's say this is your m comma n, and then you don't have access to that many regions. Then it will mean that you can expect your numerator to be kind of a little, maybe a relatively smaller. But at the same time, right, a denominator will also turn out to be relatively smaller, and therefore S m n S m comma n will get kind of balanced out, right? So, so this uh, denominator in this expression can also be looked upon as some kind of some kind of a normalization factor. Okay, so T i j. Is of course the actual threshold assigned to region T J. The actual threshold assigned to region I J. Okay. It can be zero. Can be zero if the region failed by modality tests. If it had failed the bimodality test, then you can also get actually a Tij which is zero. And uh, then, right? If you do this, now what you will what you will end up right is with this thing, right? So now after you do this, so doing this will will ensure that you get actually a threshold for each region. Every region will get will get a value of threshold. It's of m comma n. Now you could assign all the pixels right within this region that threshold and you could say that just use that in the sense that then for example if you have assigned a threshold s of 0 comma 0 right s 0 comma 0 for this region then you could assign the same threshold use the same threshold for 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 you know each location here every this one a pixel within this region and then you could check the intensity of that pixel if it is greater than s now s 0 0 we'll make it 1 if it is less than or equal to s 0 0 we could make it 0 okay this is one way this would be simple, but then what the authors advocate is really an interpolation. So, so instead of so one could one could assign S M N to or uh, to to uh, as a threshold as a threshold for all the pixels for all the pixels. In the region M comma N, and then do a binarization <coughs> However, the authors advocate advocate bilinear interpolation. What does that mean? So, by let's say bilinear interpolation, what we mean is since we have assigned a threshold for all the regions, suppose you are sitting right, uh, right in some you know 
somewhere here and you know for this region it could be it could be anywhere okay within the grid now uh, now you have values for this 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 right for all the centers you've got an smn as of m comma n and therefore right if you would like to if you'd like to assign assign a threshold for for these pixels right that are all sitting inside this grid then you think of this as forming a unit distance so between these two consider this is a, just as we did uh, we did uh, we did a bilinear interpolation right think of this as a unit distance think of this as a unit distance and therefore some pixel right is going to be a units away from this extreme topmost left and then you know b down and therefore right you can actually use this pixel pixel intent uh, this uh, smn which is a threshold this threshold this threshold and this threshold in order to do a uh, do a bilinear interpolation so the same error that we have done intensity interpolation so for example you'll do like 1 minus a into 1 minus b into into let's say s of m comma n which is here then then you might say plus uh, what do you what would you say right the plus you would say a into 1 minus b into s s of m comma n for this for this threshold whatever is the value of s of m comma n here plus maybe you will say b into 1 minus a into smn at this location plus a into b into s into you know, smn at this value to assign a threshold for this pixel and, so, and same thing right you can carry on and then you can kind of assign a threshold for 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 let's say for you know every pixel right uh, right within this uh, you know within the 7 cross 7 so for example if you go out and then that right, you've got blocks there so you will have you'll have s of m comma n there you already have you know s of m comma n and as the centers for this now you look at a pixel here again take take these four as your neighbors and then start to interpolate right that way you can fill up uh, t star uh, you can fill up the entire image with actually a threshold for uh, for every location and then do a binarization Okay, this is called, which is uh, this is called an adaptive kind of thresholding method, uh, wherein we have extended Otsu such that you know the Otsu, Otsu, see Otsu, Otsu values. Okay, threshold values that we have computed, uh, you know, in different regions can then be can then be interpolated across the entire grid. And this ex this example that I showed was was obtained like that. Okay, this one was done like that was was implemented this was also implemented with this kind of an adaptive kind of a threshold in order to implement a local scheme a thresholding scheme which was then used to used to binarize binarize the image